16 for 50 and, and win the game. It just tells you, you we just had, we got some good players on our team that kept competing and kept figuring it out. I thought we had a chance to extend the lead a couple of times, but there, that's a, that is a tough, I mean, that's, that's a team that's ready for the championship this year uh, with all that talent they have. They got, they just keep coming with talent and but I thought we competed. And Scott, a lot, uh, it seemed like at least more uh, post-ups for Russell tonight. Does that, is that something that you guys saw or was that a flow of the game thing? Well, we wanted to take advantage of certain certain matchups. Uh, I thought we did a good job in finding that. Uh, when we needed some buckets, you can't just rely. The, the threes are good off of movement, but they're also good off of doing a paint touch with our post-up players. Rui had a lot of good post-ups too. We wanted to attack th that matchup and I thought we, we did. I thought I thought the guys, um, you know, sometimes it's, it's, it's doing it on the fly and reading it because you can't call a timeout every play and reenact what they're going to do. But the growth of our younger players, you can just see it. It's, they're growing up right now because there's a lot of times that we wouldn't have ever been able to find that matchup, find Rui um, being guarded by a point guard. But we found it quick and we attacked it quick and we got buckets off of it very quick. Neil. Hey, Scott, on transition defense, whether it's bad, bad horrible. I, we, I complained through them all the entire halftime. I said no more. We'll take four guys back, and if not, we go five guys back. It's not worth the five offensive rebounds you get to give up that many transition points. But they're a fast team. They got out so early and so quick, and they got one at the very end, too. With um, We didn't get back on the raise. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I guess just when somebody falls down or if somebody's trailing the play, whose responsibility is it to communicate that somebody else needs to get the ball? Is that something that the guys back need to identify or is that something that needs to be communicated better? Well, it's, it's, it's a common theme for the entire league. If you're in the deep corner, you got you to gotta stay there and you got to be patient and, and disciplined, but you got to leave. Your first three steps got to be quick and fast and, and react quickly and and you got to go on the raise of the shot. And if, if you're an offensive rebound, you can cut through the top part of the key uh, uh, above the restricted line. You can't go underneath the basket because then you you're, you put us at a dis, uh, disadvantage right off the back. And then we got guys that attack. And you know what's crazy about, I think it was two or maybe even three games ago, we had about eight guys fall throughout the game and it killed us every time. Talked to some of the guys individually. Uh, you can't, you can't fall. I mean, you can't, you, this is the game of balance. It's a game of, uh, uh, of your space and you got to protect that. But when you do have guys falling on the floor, you got to get up and trail and, and maybe get a steal from behind. Ava. Scott, you've talked um, a lot about your guys keeping their wits about them and late in the stretch for Brad to find Thomas under the basket and that last possession when he's facing a lot of defenders. What did you see? How impressive was that from him? Well, he made two big plays. He attacked the back. Well, he missed the layup, so that was he wanted to make up for that. That was a, I don't yeah. know what happened on that one. He had a point blank, but he made it up. He attacked and he made a finish. I think it was over Jeff, uh, Uncle Jeff. And then, uh, and then they then they rotated. They didn't they they didn't rotate quickly enough on TB, and he found him. So that that gave us that gave us the, the chance to get the win tonight, and that was huge. I, TB is is like. I keep saying this and you guys can get tired. He's just growing up and it's fun. To, it's fun to coach him because he's, he's emotional. Sometimes it's, it's sometimes uh, last year, it was not to our advantage this year. He's controlling it. We've talked about it. We have some, him and I have some things going on that we, we, I think we, we connecting on ways that I can control that and channel that because we don't want to waste what you have in your energy tank on something that you can't control. But I think his growth in that area is helping us, and it's going to help us win a lot of games this year. And correct me if I'm wrong, but the energy seemed a little bit different. The, you talked about the level of aggression, especially at the start of quarters tonight. Just what did you feel from the energy from your guys? Yeah, you know what? We, we've been, I mean, it's, I mean, we're two and whatever we are, two and five. It's not great. Uh, we're not, I'm not saying that we played well, but we've, we've, we haven't had it like a, like a, like a dud. We were in every game, had a chance to win every game, and that's what you want. Uh, you learn how to win these games, and the more times that you're in this moment, you, you know how to play and breathe and, and, and think, and 
uh, time and score and foul situations, players' tendencies, you understand that much better. And it's at a slower speed. And I think the more you're in it, the better we are. Our energy is great. We got a great group of guys that cheer for one another. Our bench, I, I always look at every game. I always look at the bench. Who's up? Who's cheering? Who's supporting? Been on teams where you don't have that. You you want guys that don't play well, so you get more minutes. And But we don't have that. You know, tonight, Troy didn't play. Jerome played. I don't think Troy's uh, pouting. Obviously, he wants to play, but we have to keep trying to figure out ways that we can improve our team. And Jerome didn't play a few games ago, but he, I thought that gave him a little bit of an edge when he went to the game last night and did the right things or two nights ago in Minnesota. And he did it again tonight. Kellen? Hey, Scott. Um, after the Minnesota win, Denny was saying, you know, everyone just needs to be patient. You know, there are a lot of new players on this team and, you know, he thinks that this is a good team. You know, do you, do you agree with that? Uh, everyone just needs to be patient when it comes to kind of, um, you know, their, about the, you know, their thoughts on this team? Yeah. I mean, well, I, mean, I, a lot of coaches say this, but I'm telling you exactly how I feel. I don't, I don't really pay attention to what everybody else says. I don't, I don't buy into that. My job is to coach the team and focus on what I have to do to get our team better. And I know what we need to do. I know what we've done. And I know um, our team is good. We got a good team. We, we, we're off to a bad start. If it's a, if it's a seven game season, we, we stunk this year. If it's a 10 game season, we have a chance to get to 500. And that's the way I look at it. I focus on how to get these guys better. I got a great group of guys. Tommy has given me some good tools to work with. Danny's a young player. He just turned 20 tonight. Uh, he has to be patient. A lot of times young players want it all and want it now. But, you know, he's earned a starting spot. He's played played well in, to be able to keep the starting spot. And, and that, to me, I just focus on just play your minutes hard. That's your role. I mean, people want to get into what's my role, what's this and that. But I don't think our guys do that. Unless they do, they hear it enough from me. Your role is to play your minutes hard. You play them well. You might get more minutes. Can't guarantee it, but you just got to stay ready. Fred, do you have another? Yeah, I do. Um, Scott, you touched on TB a little bit. Um, I'm wondering the the other side of it. How how much of, I mean, he's been so hyper-efficient lately. How much of his efficiency has to do with the guys who are getting him the ball? Um, you know, just the guards who are getting him and all those actions. Well, uh, I, I, told, I told TB – when we made the trade, um, get ready. You're going to have the best year. Of, you're going to have the best year of your career. And, you know, it's a young career. You should get better every year. But you're going to you're going to get a lot of easy looks, and you're and you're going to be dem you're going to have the level expectation. It's going to be a lot higher than what I can do, what any coach can do. Because when you got players that are coaching you and holding you holding them accountable, you're going to that's like the best situation. We got a good situation. Russell holds him accountable and, and demands that he just locks in every possession. TB is a, like, he's like, he's wonderful. This guy, what he has got, gotten able to uh, overcome, it's just a great story. A great story. I love it. And I, I believe in him. But I think Russell and Brad is going to help him get to another level that he probably didn't even expect to get to as quick as he has. And, He's shooting the ball and playing with confidence and rebounding and blocking shots is not a happenstance. It's not because I'm all of a sudden come up with a better plan. It's, it's Russell does a great job of demanding and, and, and challenging them, but also loving them and, and, and supporting them. And he's probably doing more than I even know. But that's what that's a sign of a leader that Brad and Russell are. Well, it helps me because, you know, I try to help them as much as possible out there on the court. You know, I try to talk to them, whether it's, uh, Brad, Russ, Rui, Denny, anybody that's out there with me to try and see what they see or how I can get them open. And if I get them open, it's going to open up, you know, lanes and, and uh, easy buckets for me as well because they draw a lot of attention. And if I keep doing my job like I'm supposed to, it's going to open up for me sooner or later. And, you know, we get a good shot either way. I'm fine with it either way. Do you, do you feel like you're a better scorer now than you were last year, or is this just a case of more opportunity? Um. I think it's just, you know, just having guys in their spots and then just trusting the coaches in their in their uh, in their play schemes. I think that's the biggest thing right there. As long as you trust each other out there on the court, you really don't have any worries out there when you play, 
you know, with dynamic guys out there on the offensive end. Ava? Thomas, in kind of that um, same vein, Scott tonight talked about how hard you've worked on channeling all of the energy that you bring to the court. And I'm um, just wondering, how, how much did you have to work on channeling your emotion and how difficult was that? Like, how do you go about doing that? It was, it was really a, like, most times it was most like just checking myself, looking myself in the mirror and figuring out key ways to help this team because I, I play the game with so much energy, but I don't want to be a, you know, don't want to be a downfall for this team with my energy. So I really try to focus on giving my energy out in a good, effective way and just go out there playing as hard as I can. You know, that's another thing about that energy is just trying to channel it, try to channel it and to play as hard as I can on the defensive end and rolling, popping, whatever it is on the offensive end. So it took it took a while. It took a good while, but it's it's a lot of just like just self observing yourself. Um, and you guys had spoken so much about these being in the late game situations, like you were in tonight. How the more you see him, the more you're going to help. Did you feel more comfortable out there this game? Like, did that actually happen? Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I felt I felt a lot comfortable. We we've done this stuff in practice, and uh, as soon as it got down to that, I thought about practice right then and there, and how Russ and Brad try to lead the try to lead the wave and how we play, you know, when it's close get when it's close games like that. And, you know, it worked out really good for us. Quinn. Congratulations on your win, TB. Thank you. I wanted to ask you, is there anything schematically that's changed for you or the entire team on the defensive side of the ball these last two games? Like tonight, I think you guys forced 20 turnovers while only turning the ball over seven times. And obviously against Minnesota, you guys were stellar. Has there been any schematic change on that side of the floor? No, our main focus was absolutely on, def on the defensive end. We know we can score on the offensive end. Our main objective is just trying to get stops on the defensive end or making sure that the other team has a hard shot and not an easy shot at any point in time out there. Um, that was a really big point of emphasis that we really wanted to do because we knew we have dynamic scores on the offensive and we're going to score points. As long as we get stops, you know, and try and build off of those stops that we create and get buckets, I think we'll be in a good place. And I also notice you guys aren't switching nearly as much. Uh, has that helped you guys? I know I asked Brad about that maybe after the Chicago game. He said we have to ask ourselves if we're going to switch one through four, one through five. Kind of take us behind the curtain about that side of the ball. Uh, really, it's just what we try to give off is just like if you have your man, let's try and stay with your man as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Try and guard your man as much as possible and take that challenge on. And really, we've all taken that challenge, and I'm really proud of us for taking that challenge on not just one game, but two games, but three games, and, you know, try and keep building off of that. Appreciate that, TB. Thank you. Neil. Yeah. Hey, Thomas. Um, can you take us through that last offensive possession that you guys had? You got the offensive rebound and then just being ready for Brad to hit you with that bounce pass? Well, really, it was just reading the game. And uh, I saw it was a good shot that was went up, but uh, I wanted to crash just in case, you know, trying to get an offensive rebound. And luckily, it went in my favor. And, uh, you know, Brad takes so much attention for himself on the offensive end that when two people come and collapse and I roll, you know, it, it gives us – a real good chance of trying to get a bucket right there. Uh, first, praise my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, and shout out my dad today. Today is his 64th birthday. It was awesome to get a win on his birthday today. Uh, but TV's been awesome. He's, I told him after the game, I said, growth. Like, that was the word I said to him. Like, he's been growing every single game this year. Like, the what, last two games, he was, what, 17 out of 18 from the field. Like, He's just been playing dominating basketball. And the thing I love about it is that he's always willing to learn. He holds himself accountable. You know, I don't, you don't see that a lot. Like I kind of think he's similar to me mentally. Like he puts so much pressure on himself. He wants to do so good. You know, he wants to get better. He wants to contribute to winning. And uh, and that's what I love about him, man. And, and the fact that he's, he's willing to sacrifice everything, you know, to, for the betterment of the team. And, and whenever you tell him to do something, he listens like, Possession before before he got the big dunk at the end, I told him to roll because I could have hit him earlier and we could have had a bucket in that possession. Literally, he came back the next possession and did it and got the game winning dunk. So I just said, man, growth, like you, you continue to listen, you continue to get better.
And, you know, the sky's the limit for him. I'm happy for him. Beyond happy for him. Quinn. What's up, B? Q, what's up with it? I just wanted to ask you, uh, what was going on between you and TLC and even DeAndre Jordan there, I want to say, in the second quarter? Yeah, so TLC's a good defender. That's what he's out there to do. And I'm a good offensive player. My job is to move the score. So we, we, it, was, it was just chippiness. That's all it was. You know, he was talking some trash. I was talking my trash. We got utmost respect for each other. Uh, DeAndre, the same thing. DeAndre, a, he's a big brother to me. Uh, so he's his trash talking is, is you know, that's just jokes with us. Uh, with TLC, we kind of went at it a little bit, which is, I mean, it's good. It's, we just, we light a fire up on each other. Kyrie said it too. He's like, man, I just love playing against like competitive guys. Like I just love competing. And, you know, it was that was that type of atmosphere tonight from everybody. Like, so, you know, it was it was good. He, he brought, he brought some, he brought a little fire out of me tonight. And how good was it for you guys to one, not only get a, your first win with Russell Westbrook on the floor, but also be able to perform down the stretch in the fourth quarter, which is something that you guys have struggled with early this season. Well, I know y'all probably thought I was point shaving down the stretch, man. I was absolutely God ass awful. Uh, but you know, Russ, Russ did a tremendous job of controlling the game and our defense is what won us the game, man. We, we, we guarded our tails off. We defended without fouling, laid down the stretch. Uh, we know how hard of a job that is. You know, we got two of the best players to ever touch a basketball on the other side. You know, so it's it's a tough task, man. I think we did a we did an excellent job of accepting that challenge. Granted, they got two pretty good looks at the end. Uh, you know, thankfully TB was in there to, to grab that board. Um, but you know, it, it just shows our growth, man. We got a lot of we still got a lot of things we can improve on. It's, it definitely feels great to build off last win and come in here tonight against a, a really elite team and get a win on the road. Um, and then get Russ's first win, too, with us. So, you know, we just got to continue to feed off this momentum and keep it going. The positive energy in the locker room has been excellent. Appreciate you, B. Yep. All right, we'll take a couple more. Ava? Brad, on that point, um, it looked like you guys were almost extra aggressive tonight from the jump, like Russ was driving to the basket, Bertans was getting out quick. How, how much was the energy a focal point for this game? That's who we are. We have to create an identity. You know, we have to figure out you know, what's successful for us. And last game, we kind of figured that out against Minnesota, you know, get stops and get out in transition, fly, like get up and down. And that's what we do. And then on offense, we, we have so much talent. We have so many guys who can break down defenses. We have amazing shooters. We have to utilize, you know, our talents, you know, play to guys' strengths. And, you know, we do a good job of doing that. Uh, I think we had an unbelievable job of, we did an unbelievable job of controlling the game down the stretch. Um, and that's what we need, man. Like we have a young team, so it's just gonna be constantly growing and learning from every mistake, learning from, you know, what what's working and what's not working. And that's up to Russ and I to kind of just continue to mold guys and making sure we're all locked in uh, for winning time down the stretch. And um, Scott spoke tonight a little bit about Thomas learning to control his energy, all the emotion he plays with. How crucial is that? And how difficult can it be for a young player to kind of, to actually learn that about themselves? It's tough because TB plays off of his emotions, you know? So like, I let him, I let him like get it out, you know, yell, bark, scream, whatever, you, whatever you got to do, you know, to get yourself going. That's what gets you going. You know, that's what gets you going, you know, but I, I definitely agree with coach. There is a time and place in which, he has to control it, you know, he has to be able to shift it and channel it to something, you know, in the game and making an impact in the game. And I think he's he's learning that he's understanding it. And he's getting better at it. But like you said, he's young. He's gonna to continue to he's gonna to continue to do it. We love it, but you know, he's getting you can see the growth in his in his game of, of being mature and controlling his emotions. Last question from You said me, Matt, you cut out for me. Sorry, yeah, Fred. Oh, okay. uh, Brad, I, we, we talk like in the public all the time about so-and-so is this team's identity and this is this team's identity. Internally, is that something you guys ever talk about? And, and is having some sort of defined identity important for a team to kind of reach a goal? Uh, I mean, you always want to have, you know, like what, who are we, you know? We, we can't, I think that's just creates the consistency of the team. You know, what, what are we based off of? We're a defensive-minded team. 
you know, we really believe if we get stops and we get on transition, we're one of the best teams in the league, you know, because we have the ability to score. You know, last year we were one of the best teams scoring. Now we added Russ. You know, that's just making our job that much more easier. So, you know, it's a, it's all on the defensive end. You know, can we be a physical team that accepts the challenge and get stops? You know, and I think that's that's really what our identity is going to be. You know, just being able to be a tough, nasty defensive team and getting out and pushing the ball. How does it feel to uh, finally put together your first win on the floor with this team tonight against a, a team like Brooklyn? You mean our second win? Your second win, but your first win on the floor with the guys. Man, this, this is my second win, man. All right, I got you. I got you. Yeah, I ain't what I like. If I didn't play, it don't matter. I'm still a part of the team. That's fact. Um, I still contribute in different ways, and tonight was a another big road win for us. Uh, we just got to continue to move in the right direction. I'm starting to figure it out a little bit on how we need to play defensively. So, appreciate that, Ava. Uh, Russ, correct me if I, I'm wrong, but it looked like you were driving to the basket more, especially earlier in the game. Was that something that you were trying to do or was that part of an aggressiveness you were trying to bring? Yeah, I mean, uh, I had to do, do a better job of attacking the basket. We didn't, we haven't been putting that much pressure on the rim. Um, unfortunately, I didn't finish as much as I wanted to, but it allowed us to get some, some attacks at the basket. So that's going to be something I need to continue to do. And um, Scott Brooks spoke a little bit about your relationship with uh, Thomas on and off the court. Just wondering when you finally became his teammate, what potential did you see in him? Um, just potential to be, you know, a big that creates a lot of energy, um, intensity that he can go out and do it every night. It's not easy to do, um, but he has the ability to be able to do it. And uh, my job is to be a challenger. Fred? Uh, Ava, Ava just asked what I was going to ask. I'm good. Cool. Neil? Hey, Russell. Uh, I think there were a couple times where you got switched on to Kevin and you were kind of fronting him. And I think you were able to get the steal a couple of times. I guess what kind of goes into defending when you are matched up with a taller player uh, in the post and paint area? Uh, just use my size, my quickness, my strength. Leonardo? Hi, Ross. Bradley Beal just said that you bring them an important quality lead. What do you think is the main benefit that you bring to this team? Um, I think for me, it's just uh, bringing a sense of um, urgency, some some leadership. Um, the basketball stuff will take care of itself, but um, part of my job is to be able to lead and lead by example and, um, you know, create good habits in the right organization. Thanks. Ben? Hey, Russell, um, I'm curious, now that you're teammates with Thomas Bryant, how does this game compare to what you expected, I guess, um, having played against him in the past? Um, you know, Thomas has gotten better over the course of years. Just from outside looking in and being here daily, you can see how good he can really be if he continues to just lock in and stay focused on what he's really good at, and that's just bringing his energy, his basketball stuff will take care of himself. Um, and he did a good job of that tonight. All right, last question from Samir. Hey, Russ. Um, obviously, your former teammates of Kevin Durant, and you're always going to be happy for him. Um, but take us through your reaction, like emotions, within the last 10 seconds of the game when he missed the game-winning shot and Kyrie Irving missed the game-winning shot. <clears throat> I have no reaction. They missed. We win. Game over. <laughs> 